Good morning. It is a joy to welcome everyone to Central Christian Church this morning. Thank you for joining us, whether here in our sanctuary or online, wherever you are. We are so glad to have you with us this morning. Before we begin, a few announcements, and to start them off, Reverend Alyssa Spradlin. Good morning. Tuesday will be our next opportunity to uh, love our neighbors with a meal in our parking lot. So there's a sign-up sheet out on the desk. I glanced at it before I came in here. It looks like we could use several loaves of sandwich bread, some cherry tomatoes, and cucumbers. If any of that strikes your fancy, I'd love it if you'd sign up and get that to me uh, by Tuesday. If you would like to volunteer or help make those sandwiches, there's a place to sign up for that as well. Uh, this is going to be a super easy meal. We did this a couple months ago, and it moves really quickly. We just need some help with the setup. So if you are compelled to, to love our neighbors through food, uh, please sign up for this next opportunity to serve. Thank you. A few other announcements this morning. Uh, Hopefully everyone knows that September 18th, we are going to have our homecoming celebration. It has been almost about two and a half years now since COVID hit and we are doing it and we tried to do everything we could to keep everybody together and we've done uh, everything that we can and the live stream is up and so what that has done Technology is a wonderful thing, but what technology can do is have us where we can now go to church in our bed and pajamas. And that's okay. If that's what you need to do, we are more than, more than happy to, to bring that to you. But what we are asking is on the September 18th that we bring everybody back in and come together. Because it is a wonderful aspect of church to be in community. And to be in community is a little bit more than flipping on a TV. And so we are inviting everybody, if you are in the sanctuary this morning, if you are watching online, wherever you are, whenever you're watching, come. Be a part of the homecoming event on September 18th. Let us be a community together. There will be food. There will be celebration. There will be community. So we invite you to come be a part of that. And if you are here this morning, look around. Those who you do not see with you, give them a phone call. Invite them. Let them know that, as always, they are welcome and invited and encouraged to come and be a part of this. So we invite you all to mark your calendars and the calendars of anybody that you see. If you walk by and somebody sees a calendar, just slip in there. September 18th, Central Christian Homecoming. Just let them know and remind them that, that we are still here, we are still a part of them, and still a family. A couple of other things this morning. We have with us uh, Vance Bouchong. He is going to be playing the organ. It has been, we've had three weeks of piano, and so now we're going to be back with the organ, so it's exciting. So we thank Vance to, for being here and playing the organ for us in our worship service this morning. Um, and then right after service, we will have the benediction, and we will sing the benediction response, which will become now fount of every blessing this morning. And then we will sit down, because we have to do one more uh, board meeting about the vote that we had last week. We have to just confirm what was given last week. So as soon as we say, come thou fount, we'll just have a seat. Bill will do a really quick five, six minute version of all of this. And then once that is done, Vance will play the postlude and we will go and join uh, everyone else in a time of fellowship in, in McGinnis Fellowship Hall. So I will remind us of the order and how we'll end this as we get closer to it, but keep that in mind as we go on. So let us now prepare ourselves for the presence of God among us.
in God. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Come, let us follow those steps. Let all who are able please stand together and sing our hymn of praise. Blessed assurance, all verses. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, teach us to pray and to trust your hospitality for our daily bread. Let us likewise be hospitable. And as God gives the gift of the Holy Spirit to us, let us give gifts to those who are in need. By your Holy Spirit, speak to us through your word that we may know the love and grace of Jesus Christ your living word made flesh among us. Amen. And as you are being seated, join me as we welcome the children forward by singing, Jesus Loves Me.
Do you notice anything different about me this morning? What? I don't have a bag with me. I didn't bring anything for y'all today because you know why? Because y'all brought it yourselves. All right. I know. It's crazy. Miss Joyce has taught y'all many things. So what, when Miss Joyce says, how do we pray, what do we do? What do you do? All right. So we pray like this. So now my question is, what do you pray for? I love you, God. That's good. What else? What else do we pray for? God is always a great answer. What about our parents? Do we pray for our parents? Do we pray for our grandparents? Do we pray for all the people that love me? Do we pray for a good view of the TV? There you go. So... What we're going to do, what the church is going to do today, when you're in worship and wonder, we're going to talk about prayer. So we're going to talk about prayer this morning too. Because when we pray, prayer is more than just asking God for something we want. Right? Because when we pray at night, if you pray at night and you go to bed and you say, Dear God, thank you for mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, all those great things. Very rarely do you say, hey, God, thank you for me. I'm great. So we use our prayers to ask God for help for other people. Okay? So when you go and you go into worship and wonder or you go into Sunday school this morning and Ms. Joyce says, all right, let's pray. We're going to pray for other people, aren't we? All right, let's pray. Amen. Ready? Loving God. Thank you for everyone and keep them all safe. Amen. All right, guys. You ready? Jump up. There you go. You almost slapped. Good morning. Today I will be reading from Luke 11, verses 1 through 8. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend us three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. 
needs for prayer within our church family and within the families of our church family. One name to list this morning that is not on the back, Bill Gardner. I, don't, I hope many of y'all remember, is a re, was a retired disciples minister from Iowa who moved down here. He sang in our choir. He was a member of the congregation. Uh, he brought Tracy Vargas and the, and the two young boys all the time. He passed away yesterday. Uh, in Des Moines, Iowa, he passed away. And so we keep him and his family, as well as Tracy and all her children, in our thoughts and prayers as they go through this loss in their life. And also, we continue to keep all of the world in our prayers, all of God's children, everywhere. Those dealing with famine, those dealing with drought, with war, with hatred, and with violence of any kind all over the world. We pray for them. We pray that it all stops. We pray for healing for those that need healing. We pray for peace in a world where it seems peace can no longer exist. Let us now go to God in prayer, each in our own fashion, each with our own hopes and needs. Loving God, we lift up our thoughts, our hopes, our needs, not just for ourselves, but for the entire world to you. Gather them in your grace. Comfort them with your mercy. Provide us the strength to continue on serving your will as you have called us to serve, now and always. Amen. Let us come together as one community, one voice, and go to God in prayer. God of blessedness and blessings, we know that every good and perfect gift comes from you and that you do answer our prayers. We ask that you help us overcome our doubt and skepticism that filled with now with an optimism and expectation based upon your teaching and our faith, we may feel and know your true kingdom here on earth. Reassuring God. Many times we come to you in prayer that is faithless, that is futile, and that is selfish, without really coming after listening to the teachings of Jesus Christ and at times with very little expectation. 
forgive us and fill us again with trust in you, in your word, and in your promises. Teach us and encourage us to pray in ways commensurable to your will and to the needs of all the world. Loving God, lead us in the ways of peace to help the world come together and see that we are all the same when looking through your eyes. Nourish the church and the world, O oh Lord, that those who are flourishing might proclaim your true word and those who are weak might be strengthened to do your will. Pour out your healing on this planet you have made and prod us to be worthy stewards of its beauty and its gifts so that in honoring the earth and its inhabitants, we also honor you. This morning, O oh God, for those who are suffering from disease or injury, the addicted, the abused, the feeble, the outcast, the ill, the ill, we ask that you soothe their suffering and heal all wounds. Protect this world from evil and calm our anxious hearts for those who are dying and the ones who care for them. Receive them into your arms of mercy and welcome them into the company of the saints dwelling in the light as you bring to them patience, strength, and understanding. Bestow your good gifts to all of the world as you see fit, supplying every need by the power of your Spirit. And accept all these prayers, O oh God, that we offer this morning to you in faith, even as we continue to learn how to pray. We come with the words of Jesus Christ on our lips, saying the prayer taught to us, our Father. I'll be reading from Luke chapter 11, verses 9 through 13. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who if your child asks for a fish, will give it a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And all God's children say, Amen. May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of these words this morning. So our scripture in Luke is a passage that we know pretty well. In fact, we just spoke the prayer. The prayer that we were taught along with the disciples, and we prayed it only just a few minutes ago. The prayer we spoke had a few additions, a few little tweaks here and there, but we get this prayer from Jesus teaching the disciples. Because in the Gospel of Luke, prayer is a big aspect of Jesus within the writings. In Luke 5, it says, But he would withdraw to, a deserted, to deserted places and pray. 
In Luke 6, it says, Now during those days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer with God. Other examples, Jesus prayed before he chose the disciples. He prayed before he fed the 5,000. He prayed the night before he died. He prayed hanging upon the cross. Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer, a lot of time talking to God, and the disciples knew this because Jesus would go off and would pray, or Jesus would include them, and he would pray. And so the disciples, being the great students that they are, wanted to make sure that they were getting it just right, that they knew the exact way to pray. They weren't making anybody angry or upset. And so they asked the question at the beginning of our scripture this morning. Lord, teach us to pray. And so Jesus did. Jesus taught, him the pr- taught them the prayer that we speak at least once a week, if not more. Jesus taught him the prayer that... On television show after television show, if they're going to pray, this is the prayer they're going to pray. You hear it time and time again. In our sleep, we could pray this. If someone started in the middle, we could continue without missing a beat. We know this. We have been taught this since the little age. It has been beat into our heads time and time again. It is a memory that is now a reflex. For when we say, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, it clicks in. Whether you realize it or not, it clicks in. But as time and time we say it, and more of a memory and more of a rote response it becomes, do we even listen to what we are saying anymore? So we hear the words, and we acknowledge that God is holy and God is hallowed, that God is a parent watching over all the children of the world, doing everything possible to make sure that everyone is safe. We ask that God's kingdom, God's vision of this world comes true, that that which God dwells in will also be where we dwell in, that we can make, that we can do in this world to make sure that God's vision comes true. It is an an acknowledgement that this world might not be exactly what God intended. It's an acknowledgement that we know that this world is not exactly what God intended. But it's a call to us to continue to make it the world that God intended. We know that there are things that need to be changed and it's up to us with the help of God to make those changes. And in this prayer, we speak to that. We acknowledge our role in this world. And then we get to those petitions. Give us, forgive us, bring us not. We're asking for God's help in this world because we know we can't do it on our own. We know we're going to need God's help because there are going to be times it's hard, it's tough, we're going to get beaten down. We have to be picked up. We have to be given the strength and the patience to continue on. But the biggest words that we hear in this prayer is the word us. Us is the word that is used. Not me, not I, not those of my congregation, not those who think like me, who look like me, us, for all the world. When Jesus teaches us how to pray, he does not teach us to pray selfishly for just my own thinking, but for all of the world. We all need God's help in this world. Not just those of us here, but everyone around the world. And it is selfish to ask for a single person 
to be helped by the power of God. Now, I want you to understand, I don't want y'all to leave and just say and, and think, oh, God, Re Jeff is out of his mind. He's telling me that no longer can I pray that my grandmother who is sick in the hospital be well. I am not saying that any stretch of the imagination. Please do not hear that. Because we should pray for those things. We should pray for those on the backs of our bulletins who are listed, who need prayer. We need to pray for them, but that is not all we need to pray for. If we are praying for a loved one that has depression, and we are asking God to help out that loved one, why not pray for all people with depression? And ask God to help them all out. For we know that not just one person in this world suffers. We know that all people suffer. And so we pray for all of the world, not just for our wants and needs, but for the world's needs, for the hope to come into the world. Throughout the teachings of Jesus Christ, we have heard him pray time and time again. We ever asked, have we ever seen him ask just for himself? I thought of one time. At Gethsemane, when Jesus was distressed, he went alone and he prayed to God and he said this in Mark 14, verse 36. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. He was scared. He knew what was coming and he was saying, I don't want this anymore. Change this. Save me. Save me. But he continued on immediately after he said that. And he said, yet, not what I want. He had that moment, and we all have that moment, where it was like, I've got to save myself, I've got to save myself. And then Jesus realized, wait a minute. This is not just about me. This is about everyone in the world. This is not just for me. This is for the world. He realized at that moment he was being a little selfish and that that's not what God is asking him to do. Not his will but God's. Not our will, but God's. We are followers of Jesus Christ, and yet at times we forget that we are not all, the only ones in this world that need help. At times we think our problems and our problems only are it. That there is nothing else in the world that is so bad as what is happening to me. And we take those prayers to God. And it's fine. Again, I'm not telling you not to pray, not to have a conversation with God, not to ask for help with things that are going on in your life, but realize you are not the only one where trouble is happening in your life. And the prayer that is taught to us reminds us that. In this prayer, we ask that God help all of those who are hungry because we all need food. And we ask that God help provide food. We ask God to forgive all the wrongdoings that have been done in this world because we all have made mistakes. We all have had things happen to us. We ask God to forgive us. Because we need to be forgiven for some of the things that we have done in this world. Because through forgiveness can we make changes. And this is probably the most important. We ask God to help us forgive others. Because just as we have been forgiven, other people need to be forgiven. Because holding grudges, holding on to anger, 
with other people. They're, those are the reasons that hate, that suffering, and that condemnation come into this world. When we hate things, that is how hate continues in this world. And we ask God in this prayer not to bring us into a time of trial. It means keep us from evil. But what the time of trial means is do not allow temptation to take our faith away. Do not allow the temptations of this world to alter the faith that we know that you have given to us through the scriptures through the teachings and the lessons of Jesus Christ. That is our faith, not what someone else in the world tells us. Our faith comes from this Bible, and we need help in that. We need to be reminded, probably more than weekly, that those temptations are going to be out there, but those temptations are for us not to fall into. For turning from our faith and following those who will lead the world down the wrong paths is not what we are called to do. We are called to follow Jesus. That is our faith, to follow the path that Jesus walked. This is how we are to live. This is how we are to pray for others, with others. We are not to sit here and every prayer test God we are not to make deals with God. We are not trying to fool God. We are just asked to open ourselves up, to look out for one another, and to speak with God freely. As Kierkegaard said, prayer does not change God, but it changes him who prays. Our prayers are not supposed to change the mind of God. Our prayers are supposed to remind us what God needs from us. This prayer reminds us what God needs from us. To continue to pray. To continue to look out for one another time and time again. And then Jesus goes off on the parables. One about a friend who shows up and has, who has another friend show up to his house and has nothing to feed him. So the host goes to his neighbor's house, knocks on the door and says, help me, I need some bread. And now the neighbor, which I think we can probably all agree with, someone comes knocking on your door late at night. How many answer? Well, thank you. My brother one day, when we, were in, when we were at college, he was staying with me for a while. And a friend dropped by my house. I didn't know it. He didn't know it. But a friend dropped by my house a little bit later. But it's college, so normally we're up. Knocks on the door. My, friend knew, my brother knew her. Had talked with her multiple times. His first reaction, he called the police. The police came by. A nice explanation was given. But his first reaction was not, come on inside. It's 1 a.m., sure, why not? His first reaction was, there's something going on, and I'm not really quite sure what it is, and I don't know if I want to find out what it is. So we can understand where the neighbor is sitting in his, it's late, I'm in bed, my kids are asleep. Go away. But Jesus says, Keep knocking. Keep asking. It will come. Our scripture reads the word persistence. Another way to translate this word is shamelessness. And so another version of the Bible reads Jesus saying this. I tell you that even if he will not get up and give you the bread because you are his friend... Yet he will get up and give you everything you need because you are not ashamed to keep asking for it. It's a little bit better than that word persistence. That word persistence can most times be exchanged for the word annoy. 
When we pray for change in this world, we are not annoying God. But when we pray for change in this world, we are not ashamed to say there needs to be change in this world. We are not ashamed to know that there needs to be change in this world. And we are not ashamed to be a part of the change in this world. This is what this prayer is calling us to do. To continue to try. To not be ashamed because the first couple of times it didn't work. To not stop because you didn't get exactly everything that you asked for. Prayers are not a wish list. Prayers are to remind us what we are to do in this world. When the world is not what it is supposed to be, we can't be ashamed to continue to try. As Jesus continues, when we continue to search for new answers, when we continue to search for the help, for the resources, God will allow us to find them. When we continue to ask for the help of all people, when we continue to ask for the help of God, we will find the answers. When we keep knocking on the door, that door that seems to be blocked, that door that seems to be stopping us from getting to where we need to be, if we continue to knock on that door, it will be open and God's kingdom will be a part of us. God will give us everything that we need if we continue to ask, to seek, and to knock. If we try to buy God's help, it will not work. If we try to make deals with God, it will not work. No matter how many times somebody on the TV or the radio says, you know, the more you give, the more God answers. The more you ask, the more you search, the more you knock, the more God answers. We are taught to pray often. We are taught to pray in private, in public, for food, for forgiveness, for help. But most importantly, now and always, we are taught to pray for others and for the entire world. Amen. Jesus teaches us, if you ask, it will be given. Let us then, following Jesus' teaching, give what we can for those who are in need and asking for our help. Our morning offering will now be given and received. Just closer walk with thee. Who granted Jesus, if you please, a daily walking close to thee? Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Now I am weak but thou art strong keep me jesus from all wrong i'll be satisfied as long as he let me walk closer to thee come on cal Now 
I am weak, but thou art strong. Keep me, Jesus, from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as he let me walk, Lord Jesus, closer to thee. Just closer walk with thee. Grant to Jesus, if you please, oh, a daily walk close to thee. Let it be, oh, dear Lord, let it be. Now, when my feeble life is over, and time for me won't be no more Carry me gently, safely over To thy shore or to thy kingdom shore Just a closer walk with thee Jesus, if you please, for now a daily walk close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. What an abundance of gifts we have to offer. Musical talent, the melody of laughter, the use of our hands in cooking and repairs, the use of our minds in problem solving, curiosity, compassion, patience, energy, spiritual reservoirs, financial resources, obedience, and courage to act. All things can be accomplished with your help. Amen. Each and every week, just as we pray, we partake in the meal to continue to remind us of what we are called to do in this world, that we are called to give of ourselves just as Jesus gave of himself, that we are called to gather around the table as one, one community, one people, one family, and feed each other. This meal represents all that we pray for. This meal represents all that Jesus taught us to pray for. And so we come each and every week to remember our call to help 
the world. Let us prepare ourselves by singing our hymn, In the Bulb There is a Flower. that we come to this table to remember. To remember the night that Jesus met with his disciples in the upper room. How he took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to them after blessing it and said, take and eat, for this is my body shared with you. And in like manner he took the cup. He poured it out. He blessed it. He passed it among the disciples, and they all freely drank from it. And Jesus said to them, this is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for everyone, everywhere. And as these gifts come to us this morning, we partake of the bread, we drink of the cup, and we do so freely of our own choice, to answer the call that God has given to us. Let us give thanks for all that we have been given. Gracious God, as we come to the end of our Sunday worship service, we prepare to partake of these communion elements. We may be experiencing problems of various kinds. We need to remember to ask you for help with whatever problems we may be having. As it says in Luke, ask and it will be given to you. You are a loving God who wants what is best for us. You even gave your son to die for our sins. Please help us to ever be thankful for all that you do for us. In his name we pray. Amen.
It is a beautiful day here at Central Christian Church, and I thank you for coming and being part of our worship service. I remind you that we will sing our hymn of invitation, we will have the benediction, we will sing the benediction response, and we will sit down real quick for a quick meeting. If it's not quick, it's not my fault. I just want to say that. But I invite everyone after the meeting to join us in Fellowship Hall for donuts, for coffee, for conversation, but more importantly for fellowship and for community. I invite anyone who is looking for a place to belong, looking for a community to accept them for who they are, to call us, to come by, to visit us on a Sunday, or to turn on your TV, turn on your computer and watch us wherever you are. And I invite everyone now to stand and to sing the hymn of invitation, Here I Am, Lord, all verses.
The light is going out into the world and we shall follow. We shall follow now and always with our hearts open to everyone and with our prayers including the world. Please join me in the benediction. Loving God, we have heard your call and we are reminded of it each and every week. Place your words upon our hearts so as we go out into your world, we can continue to do your will among your people. Our worship is ended so our service in God's world can begin again. Amen.